unlearning can be as important as the ability to learn when the pace of technological change provides everyone with increased abilities to collaborate, to communicate, to assign and deploy resources in order to solve our challenges. When it was the case that the space uh, was very low or almost imperceptible, then we could actually achieve status by perfecting and maintaining our position around uh, mastering a set of tools, a set of practices. And then the incentive was not ever to move beyond. However, even though in many organizations, whether businesses or academia or government, this kind of mentality is probably still predominant, we are now in an age where that attitude is absolutely counterproductive. We can, of course, achieve a certain degree of mastery of the tools and the methods and the processes that we are using and uh, spread that mastery in our teams. But the ROI, the return on the investment of increasing that mastery above a certain level is negative and the threshold within which it becomes negative is possibly lowering. What this means is that as soon as we arrive to a given level of mastery of the tools and methodologies and processes, rather than investing our effort in increasing that level, we should start looking around, comparing the features and the benefits of the tools and methods with the features and benefits of alternatives. Asking ourselves, is what we are doing fit for purpose? The reason is because very likely, by the time we are asking ourselves that question, new tools and new methodologies will indeed be available. And it can very well be that the answer to our question will be yes. Moving to the new tool will represent a positive change. In order to be able to move, we need to relinquish the comfort and the stability of working with the known and embrace the unknown. Rather than having to do it infrequently and under pressure, we now have to do it more frequently and not because the external circumstances are imposing on us this kind of decision that we cannot postpone anymore, but because we realize that it is to our benefit as well as the others that we are uh, working together with. Now, I am talking abstractly, so let me give you a couple of uh, uh, examples. We, well, a couple of billion people at least, use Google tools. And those of us who are not curious enough to go beyond may not realize that Google has fallen behind. In many ways, astonishingly um, old in its approach, both to how it enables people to interact and collaborate and communicate, 
as well as in the technology details of how the architecture and the implementation of their uh, tools uh, supports that kind of approach. There are now important alternatives. Slack for chat, Notion for collaborative document uh, creation that they are uh, rich with components that are dynamic uh, and intelligent such as task management or um, what we used to call spreadsheets and now really hyper-powered in order to analyze and uh, massage data in many different ways. There are alternatives that those teams that uh, can embrace them uh, really not only enjoy but greatly benefit from. And the mentality, of course, uh, can be twofold. Either uh, the team is formed with those who have started using the most recent tools. And then for them it is natural. They don't even realize that uh, there are others who are suffering from uh, the limitations of the previous generations. Or, even though the people um, within the teams are experienced in the previous generation, they are mentally nimble enough to uh, embrace the new solutions. The other uh, example uh, is in science and engineering. Whether you are designing a scientific experiment or whether you are designing a rocket or a self-driving car. Our ability to simulate is refined to the point before starting to uh, uh, implement final designs that it can greatly accelerate the cycles that iteratively bring to what actually works. It can radically lower the cost of prototyping and it can really enhance with unexpected solutions that uh, uh, emerge from this approach the final result. We are seeing this in uh, areas uh, as diverse uh, as um, the design of uh, the Starship or the design and the deployment of Tesla's full self-driving uh, approach and feature. So, unlearning, abandoning the comfort of existing tools and existing methodologies is a fundamental ability that we must embrace, develop, increase, and as you age, supposedly that is harder and harder. It is one of the reasons why maintaining a youthful mentality to the point of being happily accused of being childish exhibiting neoteny, the uh, maintaining of childlike features in adulthood, curiosity, risk-taking, a healthy um, disrespect for authority. These are all positively adaptive features. And we all can strive not only to cultivate them in ourselves, but also in supporting others who are embarking on the path of discovering them, letting them know that it is okay not to be too strictly uh, embracing the existing approaches they know very well. It is okay to let them go. It is okay to embrace the new 
and to go towards unavoidable stumbling blocks and mistakes along the road because the benefits are higher. And then go and repeat. This is just one layer and the first layer because obviously the question is, is this approach itself constant? Should we examine uh, what are the consequences, the limits, the rooms for improvement in this approach itself? And that will be for an eventual future episode of The Context. Thank you very much for listening or watching today's episode of The Context. If you like what you hear, you can become a fan a supporter, a sponsor, or a benefactor on patreon.com slash David Orman.